Hello, this is Nathan Crutchfield. Uh, let's discuss the definitions of hazard and risk. For the definition of hazard, and I'm using the definitions from ANSI Z10 2005, hazard is a condition, set of circumstances, or inherent properties that can cause injury, illness, or death. There are a number of possible base sources or areas for hazards. These might include kinetic energy sources. We find these with regards to movement, vehicular movement, equipment movement, walking, slips and fall type related issues where you can be thrown against something or something thrown against you. Kinetic involves movement. Chemical hazards, electrical hazards, Thermal hazards of heat or cold, acoustic, which is noise, radiation, which could be ionizing or non-ionizing, and biological. This would include insects, animals, viruses, bloodborne pathogens, that sort of thing. Hazards come into play when you are exposed to them, and the scope of the hazard or the level of the hazard is such that it can breach through the normal defenses of the human body uh, to the point of causing the injury or illness. Once we have the hazard defined, we need to get into what is risk. Risk, as defined by Z10, is an estimate of the combination of the likelihood of the occurrence of a hazardous event or exposure and the severity of the injury or illness that may be caused by the event or exposures. Keep in mind this is an estimate. It's an estimate of the likelihood and the severity of the injury or illness. So how do we go about looking at this? First, we might have a exposure that is improbable or remote, very unlikely or not likely to occur. It could be an exposure that is occasional, meaning it's likely to occur at some point in time. It has probable frequency of exposure, which would be likely to occur several times, or it could be a frequent exposure. It's likely to occur repeatedly. Please refer to ANSI Z10 Appendix E for further readings on the definition of exposures. Once we understand the frequency of exposure, we look at the severity potential. It could be negligible, which is first aid. It might be a marginal injury, which is minor injury, uh, medical uh, in nature, uh, maybe several lost days, but minimal in nature with recovery certain. We might have critical injury disabilities, which are those that are three months or longer or the very worst is a catastrophic severity which means exposure to the hazard might result in death or permanent disability. We use the risk matrix as a graphic aid to help us prioritize risk. I'll be covering the use of the risk matrix in a future video. Thanks for listening. This is Nathan Crutchfield. If you'd like additional information on job hazard analysis, join us at myjobhazardanalysis.com. The materials and various discussions for this blog are based on Job Hazard Analysis, a Guide for Voluntary Compliance and Beyond, written by James Routon, co-authored with Nathan Crutchfield and published by Butterworth Heinemann in 2008. I look forward to further discussing the use of Job Hazard Analysis in future videos. Thanks again.